Yeah. So good evening. Good evening. What inspired this movie for you? Um, well, it has to do with um, where I'm coming from, Jos, because Jos is a multicultural city. So we thought about doing a, doing a film that has to do with char a character that will do something that will um, have an effect on the life of like as in other people. But it's like interlinked stories. So when you do one. Well, I mean, the interlinked stories had to do with the fact that I'm a huge fan of all cinema. I love um, filmmakers like Alejandro Gonzalez in Arizo. So it was actually seeing films like Amores Peros and Babel. Then we said, oh, we can actually do a film like that. So we said, yeah, let's just try a multi, a multi layered story. But how challenging was doing, I mean, uh, synchronizing everything to make it happen in one day? Well, I mean, um, First of all, we, we had to be very, very clever with how we tell the story. So we tried to make the characters like, where almost like when it comes to the costuming, it is almost like one costume that they have, actually two costumes. So basically, I mean like from one costume to the other costume, you just know, oh yeah, it's, it's um, the next day. And then of course, um, it was really, really um, hectic trying to sort it out with the uh, continuity people, you understand, the script supervisor, but yeah, at the end of the day, we were able to, to still pull it up. So I wouldn't say it's easy, but we still try to be clever with the script to make it easy. But yeah, at the end of the day. Was part of it editing? I mean, this clever thing you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, it has to do with um, editing. The way, the way the story was actually, um, we had to edit it. The way you're actually going to see it on screen is a bit different from the way it is on paper. Because after, because every story was supposed to start and end before, and you're going to see elements of another story before you get to the other, other story. Yeah. And because we're actually inspired by um, Fela, so we're actually trying to put every segment according to like its song title of Fela. So you know like Chop and Quench, oh he misroads, you understand? But at the end of the day we were not able to pull that because we wanted to do, um, we, we still want it to be a, um, a film that people can still watch and understand. So we tried to commercialize it a bit instead of making it like too artsy. So that's what you see at the end of the film. It's, it's also a, a very um, serious movie but with levity. In the yeah, it's actually, like it's actually a dark comedy, it's a, it's a tragic comedy. Yeah, yeah so um, so you know you, you have these bits of fun, but then later on the dark sides starts like coming to the fore in the in the story. How long did it take to do? Um, to be honest with you, I don't really want to sound like francophone filmmakers where they say yeah it takes me like three years to make a film. But actually yeah, but actually like it took a really long time. Shoot wise, we shot for um fourteen days. Well, fourteen days of principal photography. Yeah, because. We, 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 we didn't have a lot of money, so we wanted it to be on budget. So we had to like shoot like that. So we shot for 14 days, basically. Later on, we added like um, two or three days of pickup, but that's basically what happened with the film here. So I would say roughly like um, 17, 18 days. Of shoot. Oh, yeah, I mean, um, it was actually shot in Kaduna. We wanted to shoot it in Jaws, but then there was this whole um, crisis again that erupted in Jaws. So we had to go to Kaduna to go and shoot. But then, of course, we still shot it around the same time that there was still another crisis again in Kaduna. But the actors were still brave and they still came over and we shot, and we, we shot like that. What is it about Jaws and movies? Well, I will, the thing is, it's, right, it's not what is it about Jaws and movies, or what is it with Jaws and arts, you understand? When it comes to like maybe print, music, film, I mean, you always have Jaws people there. I don't really know. It probably has to do with the fact that we have um, Probably the weather, because you know you're not staying in a place where your brain is going to get cooked all the time. Like you know you're in Lagos. I was like complaining. You understand about? I mean the heat. Sometimes I mean we, if you're in, in just it has this serenity to it, and of course like it can actually bring out the arts in you. So possibly that's why we have great people coming out of just. That the means arts. you're still in just. Yeah, I mean, um, I don't run away from Joss. I know like there are some people here understand, who have actually run away from Joss, you understand? But <laughs> I still go back to Joss, and I always tell people that once you are from Joss, you always have to make sure that you have land in Joss so that when you're actually getting old, you can go back to a place where you get the fresh air and then like stay in serenity, in a serene environment. This movie has been to festivals, right? Uh, how has the reception been? Well, I mean, for a start, um, Confession now won Best Picture at the Amas, which is actually the highest accolade for Africa, homegrown cinema in Africa. And it won Best Nigerian Film, too. And it got five nominations at the um, Nigerian Entertainment Awards in New York. And then um, 
Yes, just yesterday, we got seven nominations at the Best of Nollywood Awards, which is actually a huge um, thing for us. I mean, AMA was great. I mean, AMA for me, like, is the ultimate. But at the end of the day, when you find out that awards like Best of Nollywood are giving you nominations in key areas, it means that you have actually crossed the divide. So some people might want to tell me of him elitist, but at the end of the day, even the regular people, I mean, who do the regular awards, actually appreciate it so i mean it's a huge it's a huge thing was that what you had in mind while you were shooting did you envisage that this would happen yeah yeah i mean to be honest with you when we're writing the script we know that yeah we have like i mean a very good material because when, when when we wrote the scripts it was entered for um a funding in a funding um yeah there's a funding in netherlands called hubert balls fund and we entered for it and we got the digital production grant to make the film and again, we still enter the same script to um, the Durban film mat, the first Durban film mat, yeah. and we still got, um, we were still taken as part of the Durban film mat. And so, yeah, there's always like a trend with the script, people like it. So we knew that, okay, if we can actually pull it off on location, we'll actually have something that people will, will talk about. It's your first film? Yes, it's actually my first film, <laughs> but now I have another film called Blood and Henna. Oh, okay. But yeah, but. Oh, yeah, yeah, but um, this is my, Function Now is my first film as a director. But later on, I stopped working on the post-production because it was really hard. I have a partner in the UK, and so um, trying, to, trying to come together in one space to make sure that we have the final cut was a bit um, tricky at the end of the day. So I moved on to make another film called Blood and Henna, which is about the Pfizer, um, Pfizer clinical trial that happened in Canada in 1996. Yeah. Yeah, so I shot a purely house art film, of course, English title, but the house art title is Lady Jenny. Yeah, it, it was shown in, um, at, the, at the 2012 Olympics in London at, at the Nigeria House. And of course, it was nominated for six awards too at AMA and yeah, the Nigerian Entertainment Awards. Was yeah, I didn't know who to won Best Supporting Actor with it. It was making you feel really good. But help with your partner, sorry. Uh, my partner is called. Um, I have two actually, but the main one is Tom Roland uh, Reese. We met in Berlin in 1990, in 2006 actually. I went for the Berlin Italian campus and we decided to form a company together called Cinema Pata Pata. I mean, of course, it's still in line with our love for Fela and, you know, being African. So, yeah, I mean, um, so we have this company and so we write together, he produces or we produce together, and then there's, there's Yinka Edwards. Which is like probably the, he's probably the best cinematographer in Nigeria at the moment. So yeah, I mean it's three of us: Yinka Edwards, Tom Roland Reese, and Kenneth Young. Cinema Pata Pata. I'm a bit confused We're all from on how you came about the confusion our title. Could you enlighten me? It's still the same thing. I mean, the thing is this, right? Keep some people might just feel that we don't really know better, so oh, we're supposed to like give it a fancy English title, but we just felt that no, nah, I mean. I've seen francophone cinema. When, when, you, when you go abroad, people always talk about films from Africa and they talk about, oh, there's Sam Bene, there's M. Gaston Kabori, there's Idrissa Wadrego. And you know, like, they always try to, like, their films are always African. So what we just try to do is that, yeah, I mean, we can actually do something African too. We're not going to have, like, all these um, porous titles that we have around. I mean, with disrespect to my other colleagues, you understand? We're not going to have those titles. We just want to do something African. And I think that is a trend that we want to go, and that actually even tells in the name of our production company, Cinema Pata Pata. So, so filmmakers like yourself call themselves the new Nollywood. Are you going to class yourself in that group, or there's to, a different? To, to be honest with you, I mean, um, like there's this funny story that happened in 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 2006. I met this cinematographer called uh, Christopher Doyle, and I told him that I'm from Nigeria. And the first thing he said, "Oh, Nollywood." I'm sure he's not going to know um, New Nollywood. Yeah, I mean, in as much as I would love to say, oh, I'm an alternative filmmaker, but I'll never say that, right? Because I'm just part of Nollywood, and I don't really want to like have any segregation. Oh, is this New Nollywood or Old Nollywood? For me, at the end of the day, it's the film that will actually define it. The audience that you have for it, that's what matters. It's not all about the name of what you're practicing, whether New Nollywood or regular Nollywood. What are the future plans for? Confession now, will it air at uh, Silverbird, for instance? Yeah, Confession now is coming out on the 25th of October, and of course, um, so yeah, we're actually expecting that after it's showing at um, this festival, the LCA Film Festival, there's going to be the whole bus is going to carry through with all our TV ads, and it's just going to go all the way. I think I'm done. Sorry. Tell me your journey.